Hello and welcome. I'm John and I'm going to share with you some step by step for your first project with the Xtool P2. I'm going to assume that you've already followed the manual, set up the machine, and done your first calibration. So let's get to it. Here we are with the P2 slat system. The P2 comes with slats about every other one. I've removed most of these because I use the advanced features and it's easier to just keep the slats in for the material you're using um, so that you can remove them when you change modes to curved surface or open plane or um, auto feed pass through. So to remove a slat, you're gonna gently pull up and take it out of the slot. To put it in, there's a bit of give on this side and you're gonna push in and then push down. It's important to make sure that you push firmly down all the way so that uh, you don't have any irregularity in the surface. I have slats set up for Xtools standard A4 sized as well as the standard 12 by 20. Um, it's important to have slats at the edge of your material. These are spring-loaded clips, and you want to make sure that you pull straight down. If you pull at an angle, you can get diminished motion. These clips can accommodate thicker materials, um, and if you pull at an angle, there's a bit of a catch, and you'll only think that it can do three millimeters. You can do them in either direction. I prefer to have less of the top surface covered, so I use them technically upside down. So we're gonna hook this over the edge of the material, push down and slide it under the slat. I don't always use clips for materials. Sometimes if there's a slight bow, I might only use two. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna show you putting on all four and we are ready to go. Here we are, I have opened up XCS, the P2 edition. My machine is on Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna select that. I'm using a user-defined material because I'm using my own settings, and it's three millimeters thick. And then I'm gonna import my project. This is a project that I did for my daughter's class where they wrote out their names in their own handwriting and then I digitized them. We are only going to be using one of the names in this example, but you can see that you can lay out quite a few, quite a few on the large bed size of the P2. Um, I set it up as an SVG with different stroke colors for different layers. So layer one is going to be our cut layer, which is in red. I'm going to click on cut and then you can enter your manual settings or you can save settings. So if I wanted to save settings, I would click save as custom and then name it. Since I've already saved settings, it's in this drop down three millimeter Baltic cut and that has my cutting speed. So 85 power, 35 millimeters per second, and then one pass. And we're gonna do the same for the other layers. So this is our scoring layer, and I have scoring that I have tested out that works well with this project. So 20% power, 200 millimeters per second, and one pass. And then our third layer is gonna be engraving. So I'm gonna click on the engrave tab and then I'm gonna select my settings as well, which are 30 power, uh, 400 speed. It's a, bit, it's a bit deep of an engraving, so if you take these settings, you might go slightly lighter, um, but the kids are planning on doing some coloring and stuff, and so having that extra deep engraving is gonna help it stand up to <laughs> children's love and decorating. One pass is is the last setting in that. And then down here, there's some advanced settings, line per centimeter, which is how many times the laser is gonna go across within the space of a centimeter. It's similar to DPI um, for lasers. This is a simple, small um, 
non-detailed uh, engraving, so 100 should be adequate. And then bi-directional, it's going to engrave both passing this direction and back. And so those all work well. Now that we have our settings, we have our material thickness entered. You can also capture close up. This is a good way to get exact placement. And so I can see that it's not touching the clip at all and that it's near the edge. So I'm going to have minimal material waste. Again, clicking off of my project, clicking process, doing a last visual check of the preview to make sure all, all the things I believe should be there are there and they are. And then I'm going to click process. It's very, very important to not leave the laser unattended while it's working at any time. It's a laser. Um, it's burning through wood, and so it's important to monitor it the entire time it is working. With all this set up, we're going to go over and press the start button, and then watch as the machine takes around a minute and a half, two minutes to create our custom wood crayon. If there is any issue while you're engraving, you can press the button to stop it. If there's a major issue, there is an emergency stop on the side of the machine that is opposite to the USB port. All right, as you can see, it cleanly cut through. There's a little bit of a delay while it finishes the exhaust process. And here we have our custom crayon. Thanks for watching this first project with the P2. Feel free to like and subscribe to X2 official channel for more tips and tricks and join the CO2 official group as well as the X Tool community. And as always, have fun lasering.